Jack. For most Australians, the evening news on television is their main source of information about the day's events. But how real is it? Do the men and women who decide our daily news diet overemphasize violence or are they overcautious, sheltering us sometimes from the truth, ugly though it might be? Well, at the moment, the viewer just has to accept the judgments of journalists. But that could change. The Australian Broadcasting Tribunal is inquiring into violence on television and already has hundreds of suggestions before it. Some say the news should be shown later at night. There's even the idea that psychologists should help decide what we're allowed to see. Well, to network news editors, all this smacks of Big Brother-type regulation, though the tribunal itself claims its inquiry is not about censorship. Well, tonight, your chance to play news editor, to decide if you want to see less or more of the truth. But we should warn, we've included in this report a few scenes never before shown on Australian television, and some viewers may find them disturbing. The people of Lockerbie awoke to find that large sections of their village had simply disappeared. In December 1988, Pan Am Flight 103 was blown out of the air by what was allegedly a terrorist bomb. It scattered wreckage, fuel and passengers in a 10 mile radius around the Scottish town of Lockerbie. Around midday, searchers recovered the all important flight recorders. It's hoped they'll shed some light on the crash. This Channel 9 news report is fairly typical of the coverage shown on Australian television. Wide shots of the crash site. Terrible, terrible. Interviews with witnesses. It's really devastated everybody. And discreet shots of victims. Converted into a mortuary. What you didn't see on television was this. The hideous image of a dead victim dangling like a rag doll still strapped into the airline seat. Now, this was a sight considered too shocking for the television public, but it was not too shocking for newspapers. They published a graphic illustration of the human cost of the disaster. Now, the conundrum is this. Was saving you from this sight on television sensitivity or censorship? You get to realise uh, after a while exactly what it is that people can stand and what they can't stand. In the case of Lockerbie, I believe that our viewers would not have been able to stand that shot. Ian Cook, Network News Director, Channel 9. But it happened, I wanted to see it. Why, do you, why should you see it? Why should you have to have that sort of thing thrust at you? Well, it's not being thrust at me. I mean, I want to choose to watch it or not to watch it, but if it happened in the world, why deny me the knowledge that it happened? I think that um, you're expressing a minority viewpoint. In my experience, the majority of people would prefer to be shielded from that kind of thing, and indeed should be. Is that right, that the majority should be shielded from it? Yes, I believe that firmly. The power and influence wielded by network news directors is immense. Ian Cook, for example, has been deciding what you may and may not see for 17 years. It's certainly bombed. bombed. What goes in and what goes out are decisions often made under great pressure. And that pressure has increased with the information explosion of the 80s. By the time you get to see the news, the raw material has been carefully polished and packaged into a palatable program. Good evening. But what does the final product have to do with reality? Well, we try and have a balance, I mean. David Johnson, the top newsman at Network 10 in Melbourne. What's your primary goal with the news? To mirror reality or to put on a news that rates? Because the two can be in conflict. Um, we don't alter the content of the news to get ratings. We go out after a good news service and then hope that the ratings follow. Well, Mr Justice Negus, tell me, how are you uh, <laughs> enjoying your role now as poacher turned gamekeeper? It's, uh, it's different, Richard, yeah. George Negus wasted no time taking his colleagues to task when he was appointed to the Australian Broadcasting Tribunal's inquiry into violence. Tell me about some of the vicarious thrill-seekers and ghouls who are the current <laughs> crop of TV news reporters and editors. I'm quoting you, obviously. Yes, you are. A deliberately provocative statement. I've got a reaction. I've got one from you. You know that there are people out there in our profession who do get a buzz out of the more sensational and more violent sorts of coverage that they're able to provide. Who are they and where are they? Richard, I'm not silly. I mean, it would be actionable, for instance, for me to suggest that about some people. But you know as well as I do. Are you telling me that there are, there are no journalists in our profession? who don't get a buzz out of, out of that sort of thing? 
Tell me about the ones that are intellectually lazy. They exist too. To what effect? What is the effect of their intellectual laziness? That they will take the easy way out and go for sensational pictures, which are quite often violent, rather than seeking out the more mundane aspects of news gathering. Most television news editors couldn't give a bugger about social issues. I think that's a, that's a pretty reasonable comment. Most television news editors couldn't. Well, let them prove to me that I'm wrong. Well, isn't it up to you to you know, prove the positive? Why? Well, it's your assertion. It, well, I'm making the assertion. Let other people deny it. They're quite welcome to tell me that I'm wrong, Richard. The horror began just after 9.30 last night. When August 1987, Melbourne's, Melbourne's Hoddle Street Massacre. Was shot dead and the mail driver was wounded. Six people dead, which most 18 people wounded. Australia. The gunman moved up the road, firing an automatic rifle as he went. The 15 minutes of carnage, which left five others injured, began at 4.20. Four months later, also in Melbourne, Frank Vitkovic, another Rambo fan, was responsible for the Queen Street Massacre. He killed eight before he took his own life. Just before 4.30, the armed offender jumped from the 12th floor of the building. He was killed on impact. According to the government, these pictures provoke such a public outcry that an inquiry was justified into the way violence is portrayed on television. We come up with this idea that perhaps if we shoot the poor old messenger, that somehow the problem will go away. In other words, if we can sweep it under the carpet and stop the media reporting it, well, maybe there won't be so much violence in society. In other words, I think that the tribunal inquiry is a little bit misguided. I don't want a government official or a member of the Australian Broadcasting Tribunal telling me uh, what I can get away with on television because I've, I've earned my uh, dues. I've, I've uh, had it from experience. Gerald Stone, now in New no York, in has had 30 years journalistic experience in Australia and overseas. It's only Australia that has decided to spend a million dollars and to take up your time and some other expert time uh, in a country that is uh, presently feeling some very uh, big economic hardships. This is, a, this is an interesting development, Gerald, the heightened, heightened so social conscience that you've developed since you've been away. No, I don't think. I think it may, maybe it's the perspective of reality. We're talking about the risk of government interference in the area of news coverage as opposed to the risk that on occasion a certain image on a certain broadcast may offend a few people. And I would think the risk involved in government meddling is far, far worse than the other risk. Well, why that, are you that having was, an inquiry? Because the public perceived there was a need to and the government responded to that. So there have been a lot of complaints? As I, as I understand it, yeah. Even though the Broadcasting Tribunal, of all the complaints it gets, only something between 2 and 4% of those relate to violence. Uh -huh. Generally speaking. And generally speaking, uh, the complaints to television stations about violence are between 1 and 2% of all complaints. Uh -huh. I'm just a member of the inquiry, Richard. I didn't set it up. No, 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 no. But, I mean, I'm just trying to get at what you're doing. I mean, what's the justification for it? Well, we, uh, it wasn't our place to ask for the justification. What's wrong with self-regulation? I didn't don't know that there's necessarily anything wrong with self-regulation. So we could have a perfect system at the moment? Possible. So we're having an inquiry to see whether we can improve on a system that we're not too sure is bad at the moment. But we might, we might also re, you know, remove a few of the myths about it. We may, we may in the process uh, gather together enough information and opinion to know exactly where we do stand on this issue. I don't think that hurts. No, well, why don't you do it at a university? I'd, uh, you know, you're at Queensland. Well, they know even less about, the they know even less about reality, or, Gerald, than, than journalists or, or, do. Or Bond <laughs> University, but we don't need government money to tell us that uh, on occasion, uh, sometimes we show a close-up of a body that may offend some people sometime. You're, worried, you're so worried about government interference and government, uh, the possibility of government censorship, but people like you and I have been doing that ourselves for years. What I find arrogant about journalists is that they feel that they're capable of making the right decisions in these matters, but other people, whether they be outside bodies, private bodies or government bodies, can't do it as well as we can. Why are we so much better judges of these things? Maybe what we need is a psychologist in the newsroom. Well, that's ludicrous. Well, where's the suggestion well, coming uh, from? Not from the not from the tribunal. What well, it's not on. Well, it's not. No, that had no serious suggestion along those lines has ever been made. Well, it was a non-serious suggestion, was it? Probably was. Gerald. Well, I mean, I, I saw that report and it made me think that now we should also have a clergyman so that we can get a moral balance and perhaps a general so that we can also not eliminate uh, the needs for uh, violence in our community. You know, if newsmen can't do it, newsmen who have trained all their lives to do it, who is better to do it? The fact is that different newsmen around the world will make very different decisions. What is sensitivity in one country is censorship in another. Now we must warn that some viewers may find the following scenes disturbing.
Rome Airport, December 1985, and a terrorist attack there left 13 dead. Only one crew from Italian television recorded the aftermath. The floor of the departure lounge was littered with bodies of dead and injured. Although the attack was apparently aimed at the check-in office of the Israeli airline El Al, this is what you saw on Australian television. A fourth gunman was taken alive. He'd been wounded, but the police are hoping they'll be able to question him later. Alerter les membres de la police anti-terroriste. And this is how European audiences saw the same event compiled from the same footage. None of these pictures were shown to Australians. You didn't show the close-ups of the dead bodies. Right. Why did you deny that to me when it was good enough for the French, good enough for the Italians and good enough for the Germans to see it? Because the French, German and Italian diet on television is different to the Australian diet. Is it better or worse? From my point of view, it's more adult. They can accept what happens, uh, whereas here we have trouble with that. Give me a view from the tribunal. Why is it good enough for the French, the Germans and the Italians to see that and yet I'm denied it? Why ask me as a member of the tribunal whether that's right and wrong when the news editors themselves have already decided they didn't think it was right? That's because you've got them coward already. Oh. <laughs> did you ask them that? Well, you'll see later did you on. No, no, no. If you're seriously suggesting that, did you ask either of those news editors that you interviewed whether they didn't run those bodies because of the tribunal's existence? Richard, I would say that is three-fifths of five-eighths of absolute nonsense. They made that decision without any reference whatsoever, any fear at all of, of any cowering, cowering towards the tribunal. Journalists are upright, professional, independent beings, you know that. Why would they cow to people like ourselves? Because they are of the opinion, as you'll see shortly in the program, that the audiences have become more conservative and want less violence on television. Well, that's because they're making up their mind about that. I mean, we've been talking here, Gerald's been saying that journalists are capable of making up their own mind. There are two very senior Australian journalists who decided Right? That, that, sh that sort of stuff didn't need to go to air on Australian television. Don't ask me as a member of the tribunal whether or not it should. They decide already that it shouldn't. Now tell me your view. Whether it should or it shouldn't? Yes. I think I probably agree with the way the Australians covered it. But I also agree with what David Johnson said. I wish we were more adult and I wish we could show more. So we have to be protected? No, I didn't say we have to be protected. I said I wish we were more adult. Right. Do we have to be protected? Not necessarily. We need to be educated, not protected. Well, then why can't I see that now? Are you suggesting the tribunal should say to them, you should have shown more? Yes. <laughs> Precisely. You're contradicting, Precisely. You're contradicting your own argument. You can't have it both ways. If self-regulation works and you see it in action but you don't like the result, you've got to lump it. Gerald, your views? I don't think Australians are any less adult because they, they decide that there is a certain level of human suffering that they can tolerate and more they won't. I mean, the, the whole name of the game is to ask just how much human suffering do you have to show before you show evidence of human suffering? And so I would think that Australians are more mature rather than less. Because they saw less of it? No, because they needed to see less of it, Richard. So there you have it. One opinion has you, the Australian viewer, adult, the other, not adult enough. How much of the ugly truth do you want to see? We'll put that to the test in a moment.